Change your loyalty. Be more loyal to God than you are your organization. If you think I'm anything different in person as I am over the air, think again. I'm not tied to a dollar. That's why I can preach it so freely. That's right. I'm an independent preacher. Now my objective is to bring your attention to God's eternal word before you die. Go ahead. Get right before you die. Don't waste your time and get mad at me. Save your energy. I didn't write the Bible. I challenge your pastor. I challenge your preacher. If he say he justified, the only thing justify him is that book, not his church organization. Change your loyalty. Be more loyal to God than you are your organization. Look at you. You're loyal to the UPC. You're loyal to the PAW. You are loyal to apostolic. You are loyal to Pentecostal. You are loyal to non-denomination. That means we ain't nothing. nothing. <laughs> we just ain't nothing. We, we ain't nothing across the board. That's right. Non-denomination. That's right. And you are loyal. Why is it? When we come bringing Bible, you don't accept it. But a preacher tell you anything under the sun and none of it is in the Bible. And you say, Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Shada. Huba. Guba. Gotta get a Uber. <laughs> in the tongue. Hey, hey, gotta get a taxi cab. Glory. Go ahead. What make these preachers so good and kind in you? You don't ask no questions. You run along to get along. I ain't going along to get along with nobody. Go ahead. Only thing I want to get along with God. And if me getting along with God make me not get along with you, I'll fight the whole city of Chicago. If I got to stand alone, then God will stand with me. Come on, Chicago. Come on back to Bible. That's it. You know the stuff that's in the church is not in your Bible. Go Stop going along to get along. Go ahead. Go ahead. You don't have a woman preacher in the Bible. No. Not one. And yet you go to churches where the women get up there and preach and act like men. Mm. And then the men get up there supposed to preach and they act like women. Oh. Everything is backwards. The woman sound like a man. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. And a man. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hello. Everybody praise the Lord. Yeah. Glory <laughs> to God. Everything is back when I say. That's right. Am I right? That's right. It's backward. Backwards. And people go home and complain about it amongst themselves because they see the evil. And yet you go back to the same church the following week. And why you think the preacher don't change? As long as he got your money, you ain't giving him a reason to change. That's, right. That's why I tell the people, leave the church. Because the preacher, lives, he's living off of you. And when you leave your church, that's the preacher's collard greens walking out. His chicken wings is leaving. His shrimp is leaving. His egg noodles are leaving. Hey Amen. His pasta is leaving. His spare ribs and short ribs and llama beans and candy yam is leaving. Because now you left and he got to get a job and go to work. And he's too lazy to work. That's why these men preach prosperity. They don't want to get a job. Isn't it amazing how these men can get up and tell you, look, the Lord told me I need a new jet. <laughs> Creflo Dollar did. Oh, yeah. Got $64 million. Just like that. Oh, yeah. There was another false prophet did it about two or three months ago. He got on television and on social media and showed pictures of three jets he didn't have. He said, I don't wore them all out for the name of Jesus' sake. 
He said, now the Lord is moving on me to get another one, and the Lord wants me to spread the gospel in this jet. Well, we spread the gospel, and I don't own no jet. If I had money to get a jet, I'd sell it and take that money and be buying churches like a farmer planting corn. That's right. It's amazing how people fall for every foolish scam. And you know who's my greatest fighters in the world? Them that claim they saved. Because there's something in the Bible they don't want to obey. It is hard for some people to accept they've been lied to all their life. It is hard for some people to accept. You mean to tell me, Pastor Jennings, my religion ain't never been in the Bible? You've been walking around with a $4 bill for 14 years, and you thought you had money. You've been lied to all your life. I remember I was preaching that one day, and the old man, about 77, threw his hand up. He said, Pastor Jennings, I got a 38 special. Can I go kill my false prophet? I said, brother. You can't do that. He said, I know I can. He said, but to think of it, I followed this man almost 20 years. I gave him thousands and thousands of dollars. And I found out over half of the stuff he told me never exists in the Bible. And most of these preachers know it. That's right. That's what makes it so bad. That's right. They know it. The Bible says what? Beware. Look out. Chicago. Glory to God. Look out. Lest any man spoil you. Who? Any man spoil you. Through what? Through philosophy. And what else? And vain deceit. Vain. Vain. Vain deceit. Vain. Men who just tell you stuff to make you feel good, make you feel happy. It's all about a hype. This is not about hype. This is about learning. That's right. Being spiritually educated. So you can know how to represent God, how to serve God, how to live for God. So when the Lord come, you don't be left behind. Because it's all heaven or hell. It isn't nothing else. You, God ain't going to accept you because of your looks. Somebody look better than you. God ain't going to accept you because of what you own. Somebody own more than what we do. Beware. Look out. Lest any man spoil you. Spoil you. Through philosophy. Philosophy and, and vain deceit. Vain deceit. After the tradition of men. Vain deceit. Benny Hinn come. Blow. <laughs> 20,000 fall out at the same time. Yeah. Let, 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 let me try it. You think I can try it? Yeah, try it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe y'all, maybe they didn't hear it. I mean, like, what's up? Yeah. Ain't nobody falling. You couldn't get Benny Hinn in here. No. DDJ wouldn't come teach to this size. No. A few hundred people, that's too small for him. To him, that's not enough to fill up his jet. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't you know if only one person would have came here at this meeting, I still would have been here pounding on their soul? That's right. Takes God to put the love of a soul in a man. Before we had a church in the area called Fredericksburg, Virginia, I often give this testimony. We had one member, one old mother. She passed away now. It was before I even had a car. I wasn't on radio at the time either. I was catching the train. I was on Amtrak every month for 10 years. Going all the way to Virginia, preaching to one person. Amen. Ten years. Amen. God taught me if you can't value one, you can never value 100. Amen. Ten years. Didn't have a church there then. For a pulpit podium, I used a bookcase. And the book still was in it. We would meet in her house in the basement. Coming off the train. I would leave praise service. No one in there. She and I. I tell them praise service is over. I'm glad for everybody that's here. Only one person in the building. 
She'll get up and sing and testify, and I would say, there's another testimony. <laughs> I said, all right, thank God for all of you that are here, all of you that have an offering. Let's give our offering. <laughs> I passed the pan to her. She put her money in it. She passed it back to me. I put my money in it. I blessed the offering. I said, all right, thank God for all of you that came out tonight. <laughs> I said, we got to speak all the way from Philadelphia. I said, I'm going to introduce to you our brother and our minister, our pastor, Pastor Jennings. And then I leave from the front and come from behind, come to the pulpit. All right, greetings, everybody. <laughs> Ten years on the train every month preaching to one soul. These men wouldn't do that. No. They don't care nothing about your soul. If you sit, first they want, they want their... They won't even call you. They'll send you a letter with a, with a, a pack of brown envelopes and say, don't forget to send your money. They don't care. The love of God is not in them. The love of money and selfishness is in them. That's right. Go back to the book of Joshua. Everybody all right? Yeah. All right, follow me. Back in Joshua now, chapter 24. Uh -huh. And at verse 14. Listen. Now, therefore, fear the Lord. All right, Chicago. Now, therefore, fear the Lord. Give chapter and verse again. Joshua chapter 24. And Joshua, the 24th chapter. And we're at verse 14. Verse 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord. You know, when you fear the Lord, you'll find yourself doing things for him that you never thought you would do. That's right. You will find yourself obeying things he said that would appear to be out of character to others. Yeah. Why would it appear to be out of character to others? Because they may not be used to seeing you live this way or dress this way or conduct yourself this way. I was in Harrisburg last week. We had a jam-packed crowd and baptized 34. Mm -hmm. And a few weeks before that, I was in England. I was in Europe. Church was jam packed. And we baptized 28. And let me show you how God worked. They came all the way from Cyprus, yeah. went down in water. Came from the Philippines, went down in water. Came from Holland, went down in water. Came from Nigeria, came from the Congo, came from Rome. And one. Gentleman came from Iran and he gave a testimony that stuck with me. He was born and raised Sunni Muslim. He said, I never heard of Pastor Jennings. Never heard of him in, of him in my life. He said, I was raised Sunni all my life. He looked like an Italian, but he was an Iranian brother. He said, I was taught to recite the Quran. He said, but I heard so much talk about Jesus. I had a lot of questions about Jesus that nobody could answer. And he said one day, he said this was his first experience with the Holy Spirit. He said he knew God was real. He said a voice spoke to him and said, fine, Geno Jennings. He never heard my name in the earth. He said he looked, he said he knew he wasn't going crazy. He said he heard it again. Fine. Geno Jennings. He said Geno Jennings. He went and Googled it. The truth of God came up. He said when he watched message after message after message, every question he had about Jesus was answered. Every question. He came from Iran. Went down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, now I'm walking this holy way. See, I don't care what you was raised. God is a God that bring you to the straight path. And there is no path straighter than his. Listen. Now, therefore, fear the Lord. This is what I want to teach you, brothers and sisters. I want to do what preachers and society undone. It was common years ago for mothers and fathers to teach children that God is first. Yeah. 
Am I right, I said? Amen. It was common that the old school parents taught their children, even if the parents wasn't living right. I mean, even if they were sinners, they told them. All right, they had a saying, God don't like ugly. And they were, they, in other words, they was putting fear in the kids to let them know how God will chastise you or reprimand you for your wrong. Now, it dwindled. So the subject, have you noticed the subject in church has shifted? Years ago, the subject in church was all about God. God was the center of worship. God is not the center of worship now. The love of money, wealth, prosperity, that have taken over church and God is obsolete. Nobody hardly talk about God no more. No. Nothing is taught about consequences for sin. Yeah. So if there is no teaching on consequences for sin, then I become no longer afraid of doing wrong. That's right. Look at the chain reaction. If I'm no longer afraid from doing wrong, I have no conscience. If I have no conscience, there is no will to repent. If I have no will to repent, it's because I don't feel no remorse for wrong. If I feel no remorse for wrong, I don't care if I'm going to hell. Do you see the chain reaction? So the fear of the Lord must come back. In church. Oh, yeah. And the church must be put back in order. That's right. That's right. The church is not in order. It's not God's church. It's Bishop's church. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. It's not God's church. It's your slick head reverence church. Yeah. You see if he represent God. He won't let you call him reverend. No. Someone said, what? Only one in the Bible is called reverend and got away with it, and that's God. The Bible said holy and reverence in his name. It's his name. You don't find in the Bible where it says reverend Peter, reverend Paul, reverend John, reverend James. So stop calling your so-called pastor reverend. When you call him reverend, you call him God. Psalms 111 and verse 7. Follow me in your Bible. Give chapter and verse again. Psalms 111 and we're at verse 7. Says what? The, the works of his hands are verity. The works of his hands. Are verity. Are verity. And judgment. And judgment. And all, all his commandments are sure. All his commandments are certain. They stand fast forever and ever. And? And are done in truth and uprightness. Yeah. Now at verse 9. All right. He sent redemption unto his people. He sent redemption to his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Then what? Holy. Holy. And reverent. And reverent. Is his name. No. That's what you call your pastor. Holy and reverent is his name. Why you call your pastor reverend. Amen. If I got any reverends here, I'm going to take your title away from you. That's right. If you hear and your name is Reverend Bill, you just Bill when you leave here, buddy. That's all. Reverend John or Reverend Cunningham, you just Johnny. That's all. Eh? That's it. No Reverend. No. Don't you call no preacher Reverend. Amen. Only one can bear the title Reverend and get away with it. Holy. And that's God. The Bible says holy. And Reverend. And Reverend. Is his name. And they ain't your pastor. No. 